All right. So good evening, good morning, good afternoon to all of you. And uh, I'm very excited for this particular masterclass as procrastination has been one of the central themes of my own journey and overcoming it has been really difficult and really liberating, as I would like to put it in context of my own journey. So requesting all of you to put on your videos if you feel comfortable. Can you do that? Let's interact a bit before I share the screen and we go ahead. Hi, Shruti. Hi. Hi, Jasmine. All right. I have two of you. Anyone else? Are you comfortable to switch on your videos? If not, it's fine. It's fine. Don't worry. Hi, Ramya. Hi. All right. Hi, Pranati. This is Pranati, right? Okay. All right. So before I start uh, talking about what procrastination essentially is and what is the theme that guides it, I would like, uh, you know, all of you to just for a second, close your eyes and focus on your breath and relax your body, relax your head, your shoulders, just relax and open your heart, open your heart to receiving. Keep an intention where you open yourself up in a manner that you receive guidance from your ancestors, from the divine forces, from the universe, in whichever form you need it. Simply allow yourself to open up to higher dimensions, open up to the blessings and the abundance that this nature has to offer and drop all guards down, drop all barriers down and feel this, this class and this circle to be your safe space, a space beyond right and wrong, a space beyond judgments, a space where you can be honest to who you are, where you can be honest about how you feel and where you can open up in ways which you might not have experienced before. So open yourself up to something new that might show up and drop all the guards down. Keep that intention in your heart once again and seek blessing from the higher forces. And when you feel relaxed, you can open your eyes, okay? All right. Okay, all right. So I have, so I, I'm actually, I have structured this class a bit differently for people who have been attending other classes that they've taken with me. So I'm gonna ask a couple of questions and I would request all of you to type out your answers in the chat box, okay? So the first question is, what are you procrastinating about currently in your life? Is it a specific area in your life? Is it 
work health uh, is it any relationship any conversation anything or is it in general a theme that governs your life in say all aspects okay so just think of the core reason or the core aspect that you find yourself you know delaying indefinite indefinitely even though you want to do something about it but you are unable to do something about it so maybe type out your answers in the chat box so gargi says need to complete some assignments for work have been procrastinating procrastinating even though i know i that i need to do it all right all right shruti says about not putting effort to do things that can make me fit or lose weight okay so that's about her health okay then i have noor ji saying need to take care of my health physical health anything that would change the status quo all right yukti says work wise i am a baker and i need to explore a few areas to experiment but i am just not able to all right work assignments priyesh says work assignments mike and pooja says specifically about work my health sorry they says procrastinate on work assignments regularly okay jagriti says specifically about work health some assignments so main areas that i see here work and health work and health all right self care and growth all right ramya says self care and growth except my work i procrastinate everything else okay so this is a different answer by ratna that except my work i procrastinate everything else mainly my health self care and household too okay thank you okay so i've received quite a bit responses from all of you about what so this shows that you know somewhere that what are you procrastinating somewhere you have a hint of what is this thing that you are delaying okay however you don't feel the control over it however you don't feel that uh, urge or that uh, safety to go for it or to do it or to take a chance or experiment or explore so even though there is this deep uh, sense of knowing that what is it about there is also this uh, you know no control scenario where i just don't know what to do about it okay and even though logically all of us who are present in this circle today all of us know logically that you know i can try this i can try that i can maybe do this this might help me that my and we have so many people around us our friends relatives teachers who might tell us that you know if you do this 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 your your problem will be solved right but uh, however however logical it might seem there are certain things which goes beyond control as it takes over the sense of safety the sense of security and control that we as human beings need to survive and thrive in life okay so let's keep the logical uh, explanations aside as we walk into this door which tells us why things are beyond control and what can i do about it okay okay so now that all of you mentioned the areas that you find yourself procrastinating about or delaying about i have one more question okay now allow yourself to go to the peak of this experience okay we find ourselves delaying it on a daily basis and sometimes we are often you know we are so distracted we are not even aware if we are delaying it right so think of those times when you are really aware and you find yourself engulfed in this feeling that you know i'm not i'm delaying this and i'm not doing anything about it 
so what is the worst experience of this procrastination what are the emotions that it bring that it you know brings up in your inner world at the peak of it for example i'll give you an example for example it can make me feel very anxious at the peak of it i might just feel very very fearful or i might feel very lonely and i might just isolate myself from the world i might feel helpless or i might feel that there's no one who understands me i might feel jealous of all the people around me who i feel that you know they are they have control of their lives and they don't and i don't have it so it can bring tremendous amount of jealousy it can bring a lot of anger it can bring a lot of sadness so there's so many things that it can bring up so maybe in a very brief one or two words type it out again how does it look in the worst times of it for you you can take a minute to think about it and trust your first instincts okay we have dropped all logical you know explanations aside so noor says guilt and sadness gargi says guilt because i am not being productive okay pooja says i feel self critical so there's this self critical voice that takes over yukti says there's self doubt okay shruti says i feel jealous of people who look better not being able to accept myself isolated from others all right fear of not living up to potential feels guilty guilt self critical helplessness and guilt okay all right just a second okay feel tension and self criticize okay okay fear of not living up to potential and self doubt also resonates okay fear and self doubt all right so there are so many uh, answers that revolve around helplessness that revolve around guilt and that also revolves around being self critical being self doubtful and having stress having tension so all of these feelings and all of these emotions they appear in our inner worlds right this is what we experience in our inner worlds whenever something that we expect on the outside when when we expect something to happen on the outside even if it is health or work or relationship anything that is something that we are expecting on the outside however the feeling that emerges as a result of that procrastination or that experience is very internal that feeling that whole experience is very very internal so let's come to this internal landscape that we carry with ourselves all the time even though we might not be aware of it all the time right it might arise only when we are at the peak of those experiences only when we allow ourselves to feel that guilt deeply only when say we have been delaying it for a long time and now these thoughts are unavoidable and it simply engulfs us and it brings this whole a uh, narrative or story around guilt around helplessness around doubts around being critical 
so when you say helplessness and when you say guilt i request all of you to realize that it is about it always comes with a story isn't it it's not like it doesn't come with a pop up that you know i'm guilty it comes with a story attached with it now this story can be a story from the current scenario it can be a story from the past it can be a story from the future that i have attached myself to right so there can be so many stories and so many narratives that are attached with these emotions am i right make sense can anyone just type out yes anyone does this make sense okay okay thanks karki okay i got a big yes thanks <laughs> all right so so all of these emotions they come up with a story attached to it now these stories are the stories that we believe in very deeply isn't it isn't it something that doesn't even allow us to question it it comes during a time when we don't realize whether it is a belief system or whether it is the reality of who i am that is the main confusion that we experience in the peak of going through this going through this guilt going through this helplessness this self doubt whenever it comes with a peak and a story we just lose control and we find ourselves believing in it and merging with it okay okay so at this point i'm going to share my screen if you all have any questions please type it out i'm going to take them at the end i have a okay jasmine says it's almost like we procrastinate till there's an option to do it right <laughs> that's the feeling that's the feeling okay so i'm going to share my screen here and i'm going to talk about this a little <clears throat> maybe if i get time i'm going to work with one of you a little let's see okay so how procrastination looks on the outside it may look like avoidance it may look like i have trouble focusing i get distracted very very easily feeling low self esteem feeling sad and depressed feeling guilty like so many of you said feeling self critical and self doubtful like so many of you said indulging in self sabotaging tendencies like addiction binge eating watching hours of content scrolling social media aimlessly there are many things by which we can get distracted and that's how it looks on the outside okay so before i go to the next slide i'm going to talk a little bit about what is this cycle of procrastination okay so we talked about what are the areas where we are procrastinating and how do we feel during the peak of it i got so many questions you know i got so many questions from so many of my clients they say that even after getting the tools of how to work with procrastination i start procrastinating okay they say that i have received so much uh, you know awareness about why is it happening and what to do about it but then i find myself procrastinating that also so it's not ending so why does it not end and what are we missing okay so when we see procrastination i actually don't see that as a word that exists in itself so let's understand this word a bit okay before we go ahead let's understand what is happening here and what is this cycle okay so when we say procrastination it's actually the act of delaying something right that's what we understand now 
let's see what happens for example uh like i think shruti here said that she wants to work on her weight issue but she find herself procrastinating it again and again right so what happens is we decide something all of you all of us who answered the first question could only answer that because there is a decision maybe i want my work to look in a certain way or my body to look in a certain way or i want something in my career in my finances in my relationships in my health which i am not getting and when i decide something and then i resist to do the very same act this whole thing is what we call as procrastination isn't it so let's break it down let's for a moment you know remove the word procrastination and see what are we doing right so we decide on something and after deciding on something we find ourselves constantly resisting to act on that decision or to act towards the decision now when we are constantly resisting when we are constantly finding ourselves resisting what we do is we finally find ourselves judging when we resist a lot the next step is judgment so we judge ourselves or we judge the world or we judge the situation or we judge anything it can be anything but we for we find ourselves into that space where there are only judgments about me about my uh, health about my work about the people in my life and maybe my home my assets everything okay so three steps okay let's break this down into three steps one is we decide something two we resist it and three we judge ourselves for resisting okay so this is the cycle which keeps us involved in it all the time and what we focus on is that judgment part we find ourselves stuck in the judgment part because we often feel that we are at fault we often feel that it is something that i should have done and i didn't do it and now i get to judge everything okay so allowing ourselves to first of all drop the judgment is the only way to take the first step in the right direction okay because the more we judge the more we are in this cycle in this three step cycle okay where we are constantly resisting constantly judging constantly resisting constantly judging okay so the first idea is to drop judgment and to come up or come behind and see what is this resistance about what have i decided and going to the decision and actually looking at that decision now from a different lens from a non judgmental lens and see it whether this decision really works for me why did i take this decision in the first place was it for me or was it for the family that i belong to was this decision really something that i wanted or was it something that would make me love you know would make me lovable by my family or by this uh, set of people in my work or by the people of the world anything okay so it is very important to look at that decision that i am resisting in the first place and then judging myself for it okay why do i say this is because 
most of the times the decisions that we make about ourselves and our lives and our work and our health and our careers and our relationships anything most of the times the decisions that we make are the decisions that are influenced by the point of views that my family had by the point of views that i have had from my environment as i have grown up and from the point of views if you go to the bigger circle from the point of view that i have seen say around my schooling around my education my teachers my friends my city my country and it can go broader and broader okay so i need to revisit i need to look at my decision and i need to see whether that decision itself needs alteration because if there is so much resistance what is it about the decision that is causing so much resistance okay so to be able to do that the first step is dropping judgment and how will that happen is when i don't find myself at any fault because this is an experience this is not something that i am choosing consciously procrastination is not something that we do consciously it happens on its own and we experience it in our bodies in our lives be beyond control okay so all of you this is one of the most important takeaways that procrastination is an experience and it is not an act in itself that we consciously choose and we go on doing it okay and since it is not an act that we go on doing it you know that we go on choosing and doing we might as well just drop the judgment around it because the more we judge we are limited in this reality we are limited in this cycle and we we'll find ourselves getting stuck in this cycle again and again and again and again even if you know i put a lot of effort and i might say lose weight for you know in the next 6 months or maybe i you know i might get that promotion that i'm looking for but what after that maybe just after i get my promotion i'll get into a fight with my boss and i'll leave my job and there are so many cases where we have seen things like this happening all the time why does that happen it's not a conscious choice it is something that drives us and our bodies beyond control so now let's take a deep dive into what it is all right how procrastination feels on the inside okay so on the outside as we discussed it feels like all of this and on the inside a lot of people mentioned that they feel the guilt they feel helplessness they feel critical the heart at the heart of procrastination there is a lot of fear there's a lot of fear there's a lot of fear of failure number 1 and there's a lot of fear simply because it might just feel too much it might just feel a lot and overwhelming anything anything that i have envisioned in my head and i have envisioned it perfectly maybe my visions keep on changing every day maybe my level of perfection keeps on increasing every day and with that increase in my visions about what i should do and how my life should look like how my body should look like how my uh, relationships should look like in that process of creating the perfect future creating the perfect uh, you know the perfect structure of how i want things 
a lot of energy is consumed a lot of energy is consumed in constantly visualizing and making that vision perfect again and again or i might just avoid thinking about it all together avoiding anything also requires a lot of energy so when we do that what happens is there is no energy left for us to do the act in itself there is no creative energy left for us to explore to innovate to experiment or to even try something that our heart really desires okay so a lot of energy is preoccupied in this act of envisioning what i want for myself and how would that perfect future or the perfect scenario look like right so there it's very important for us to understand where does this fear come from what is this anxiety stress so this this is like a soup of emotions that we experience right it's not like fear of fear fear can be experienced in the form of anxiety in the form of stress in the form of loneliness in a in the form of a lot of fatigue exhaustion low energy a sense of a uh, threat in the system in the nervous system in the body guilt so all these things combine or work differently at different times and the base of it the, the heart of it there is a lot of fear and this fear is not something that we are choosing right this fear is not something that we are choosing this fear is something that we are experiencing it is a part of the body part of the system part of how our nervous system reacts in certain situations and those are the clues actually that tell us how our bodies are reacting at different situations right there are certain things that can make me fearful but might not impact you at all and there are certain things that might bring a lot of fear in your system but i might feel absolutely okay with it now why does that happen and what is this fear that we carry in the system so when i say we carry fear in the system it is simply the fear that we have seen in our families our environments growing up number 1 it is also something that we carry in our genes that we carry as impressions from the system that we belong to our parents our grandparents and uncles aunts everybody that make the system that we belong to they have had different experiences in life okay now our reaction and our experience regarding a certain situation can bring up fear if that is the normal response of my family or certain member of my family why does this happen how does this happen okay so i would like to talk a little bit about how do we look at an issue okay first of all am i at fault for having this fear no not at all we are not at fault for having this fear so drop that judgment right now and open yourself up to simply you know maybe just say it aloud uh, that i drop the judgment about procrastinating because i'm not at fault at all there's no fault here and dropping this judgment will only allow me to go deeper and actually do something about the life that i want to manifest for myself okay so i'm going to do that i'm going to make that different choice today so allow yourself to be more than this judgment that you have created for yourself okay so we must understand that we are human beings and no problem that a human being experiences 
is individual in nature not even a single issue works in an isolated manner it is not isolated it's not like my you know if i am experiencing procrastination it is my issue and and i'm going to do something about it otherwise i am at fault no that's not the attitude with which it can ever be solved the first thing that we need to do is have some compassion and drop this rigidity that makes us feel as if we know everything so we can drop that rigidity and we must understand that as human beings we are very relational everything is relational when we were growing up when we were children as children when we saw our mothers fathers siblings aunts uncles all of them and all of their attitudes and point of views all of that contributed in making me and giving me an identity right a personality which is a culmination a combination of all of those point of views that i carry from my system when i say system my family system right i not only carry it in the form of what i have seen what i have uh, witnessed growing up i also carry it in my genes in my body to the point that we also look like our parents and our grandparents right anyone can tell you that you know you have the nose of your father or you have the eyes of your mother so if we are so much influenced by you know physically by our family system what makes us think that we will not be influenced by their point of views we are totally influenced by it and the only way to make a different choice is by becoming aware by first of all becoming aware that what are these point of views that i have absorbed and i have started believing in them and then i am deciding based on them and then i am resisting and then i am judging so this is the whole cycle so we are relational beings and our identity personality point of views notions attitudes are all imbibed by the environment that we grow up in okay and this environment actually starts with the womb of the mother the first inner environment that we are exposed to on this planet is the womb of our mother so when i was in the womb of my mother what was she feeling how did she see the world did she feel safe enough to express herself and be whatever she wants to be or was she contained or was she restricted in a limited reality whatever it is i will be impacted by it and this is not just uh, this is not uh, metaphysical this is biological that's how our physiology is governed that is how we learn how to that is how our genes learn actually how to express itself when we show up in the world so our environment whenever i say environment it actually means our parents our family our teachers in short our system each and every issue including this fear is systemic in nature it is not individual in nature it is systemic in nature okay so first of all drop that it's a relief it's a aha moment that this is not individual this is systemic and if it is systemic and if i had no control then then what is it to blame for nothing however however this does not exempt us from the impact of this fear right since we carry it within us it impacts our life every now and then the impact blocks us from achieving our goals and we need to revisit our systemic influences in order to identify the root of this fear that we carry because each one of us might be you know entangled with a different story even though you know we belong to sometimes siblings i work with some siblings and i realize that even though they come from the same home 
they carry very different impressions about their families about their parents because their genes are different their expression is different what they absorb from their environment was not same it was different so each one of us we are born with a unique lens that is there within us and now this lens actually absorbs whatever it has to from the whole environment okay so the only way to actually go to the root is by exploring your own life and there is absolutely no point of you know hypothetically assuming something trust your feelings and your unique experience and see where does it take you okay so we need to revisit the influences in order to identify the roots and we need to release these limiting faulty belief systems so that we can finally bring healing to ourselves and we can finally have the space to actually do whatever we want to do okay so up till now so i have one more slide to cover but tell me if you have okay wait let me cover that and then i'll open for questions all right just give me a second right all right so we go this is actually my favorite slide <laughs> yeah so it's about so why i'll tell you why this is my favorite and what makes it my favorite because making a choice is something that we all struggle with okay because we are governed so so this body is carrying this fear is carrying these patterns of these cycles of uh, judgment and resistance for so long right we have been carrying this for so long so when you carry something for so long it almost becomes like a second nature it almost becomes like something that that almost makes us feel that we are in a no choice universe as if you know it as if we know theek hai you know we are we are listening to all of this but then how do we change it it's so central to the life that we have been living so there is tremendous resistance that we might experience when we want to make a different choice okay so think of this red door as the door that you have always been taking up in order to look at your life your decisions your um uh, work your health anything at all might have fallen under the category of this door you know you might be taking this door again and again and again and you might not even realize it because it's become a second nature now if it's become a second nature i can close my eyes and i can open this door i don't even have to see anything it's so you know my body remembers now it's it's a part of my body so you will feel a lot of resistance coming up when you try to go deeper when you try to maybe you know work with someone uh, on this issue when you try to maybe you know simply join something do a meditation anything that you might try can come up with a lot of resistance now you need to see you need to look at this resistance not as something bad or uh you know something that you need to be scared of you can see this resistance as a nudging point that's actually telling you that okay i might be going for a different choice this time maybe this will allow me to open a different door a different door that leads me to a life that i have always desired but i thought it might not just happen it might open a door to a possibility that i thought will never show up for me but it can show up if i simply open this door so things can look very difficult 
in the beginning but as we take the first step and we move in that direction it suddenly can become very easy it can bring a lot of ease in my system and it can simply show me a different path right so knowing this actually guides us whenever we are trying to make a choice and it simply requires a lot of courage why why do i say courage is because again as i mentioned we are so accustomed to live in this state of fear in this state of you know uh, confusion in this state of okay maybe i am made for this only maybe i should not go for a lot of things maybe that's not what i want so limiting ourselves becomes easy when that is what i have seen growing up okay when when i have seen so many people living in fear all the time when i have heard stories of my uncles and aunts and grandparents where they struggled so much to have a life that they wanted to have it's almost like it almost feels normal to limit ourselves it almost feels normal not to uh, you know go for that authentic version of me and actually doing what i want to do unlocking my creative potential because all of us are born with our unique creativity okay however when we know this we can actually make a more aware choice even if we feel the resistance we can be kinder to ourselves and still go for the choice knowing that ki you know knowing that this 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 i was expecting i was expecting the resistance i was knowing that this will show up because this is not normal for me sometimes living the life that we desire is not normal for us and living a limited life that we have seen our parents our grandparents living even though they had their own reasons okay it's not about right or wrong here but it is simply about looking at the limited reality that existed when we were growing up now we live in a world of infinite possibilities we live in a world of so many choices so even if it makes us feel a little abnormal we might as well go for it okay at least that's what made me uh take a different choice okay even though it felt highly abnormal to me even though it felt like a threat to me but uh, when that choice when i took that choice and i went into that door just on the other side of the door i started looking at the life where there can be a lot of ease okay so i can have a life of my desires and whatever i want only if i'm willing to see honestly where am i stuck and what is contributing to this stuckness and how can i get over it and this is not a quick fix that i'm offering here nothing is a quick fix we are trying to change the reality of who we are we are trying to change the reality where these cycles can no longer exist where we can continuously tap into the highest potential of who we are and that does require some work but definitely not longer than the period of procrastination that you have been experiencing okay so when you compare you'll realize it's it's not that big a deal it's it's simply new and hence it's kind of uh, resisting in the beginning okay so as i said since every issue is systemic in nature and we need to actually work on the systemic influences let me introduce all of you to our upcoming course just a second yeah to our upcoming course i'll just open it yeah yes 
So our upcoming course, the systemic medicine course, this starts on the 4th of February and it will be taken up by Dr. Gaurav Deka. He is an international expert on systemic work and he's also my trainer since last three years. And whatever I've learned about the systemic work is through him, with him. It has been a crazy journey. And why am I telling you about this course? Mm. Because if you allow yourself to simply dive into a platform that number one, gives you a community, a safe space, where you find people who are actively working in the same area, just as you. Number two, it gives you a whole new set of tools and knowledge that will guide you to understand your system better. We often feel that, you know, we know what were the significant things when we were growing up and uh, we, we think we have a clue, but when we actually study and we actually learn more about how a system operates, what are the influences that can actually be very critical to a child growing up and what have we absorbed? So when we learn in detail, we actually get to look at our own systems and our own life in a very different lens. We can work on ourselves in a very profound manner. And the entire outlook and attitude towards ourselves, our work, our life can change and it can change drastically. If you allow yourself to give these three months, like the classes are also divided, I'll just go to the curriculum months. So there are 12 classes, okay? 12 live classes by Dr. Gaurav. And there is one class in each week. There will also be recordings given to you. So if at all you miss a class, you can go back to the recording. Do visit this website. Go through the content in detail. Okay. Every class content is given in detail here. And I will be one of the supervisors in the course. And I will be guiding you at every step. We also have four support sessions with amazing supervisors in the team. And there will also be a Facebook group where you can post your questions, which will be active after the course. So all of this allows us, allows you to deep dive and understand the fundamental of who you are and the fundamental of how can I build my life and all areas of my life. It can be any area, okay? And the main point is, am I going to repeat the point of views that I have been given, that I have been absorbed with, or am I going to allow myself a different, more expansive reality where I'm not limited by these point of views and I'm not limited in my reality? What if making a choice like this can allow me to tap into one of the doors of success or a completely unknown reality, innovation, creativity, something that I have not even thought about till now, how wonderful that can be, right? So allow yourself to do something, make a choice, a different choice, okay? Something different not the same. All right. So I go to the pricing. So this course is now at rupee INR. This is INR, okay? 1,50,000. And you have some amazing EMI options, which goes to as low as 6,000 per month. You can check it as you, you know, just go to the website and see this. This is one of the best price at which you can get some, you know, the, the niche training that, has, that will be happening here. 
and you can trust me that it can change your life beyond logic whatever logic you might be you know whatever you might think right now when we allow ourselves to see the subconscious themes that guide us when we allow ourselves to drop judgments and see the fear the uh, you know also the strength that comes up it's it's a phenomenal journey that you will be allowing yourself so if you have any questions about the class or the course feel free to type it out or even dm me later i'll be available for that okay so i'm officially ending the class here you can write down your questions or you can raise your hand i'll ask uh, ask right away anything any questions priyesh has just mentioned the course website please you can all take uh, you know just copy it from here www.thesystemicmedicinecourse.com priyesh is also one of the supervisors we'll be having 10 wonderful supervisors it's going to be a great journey any questions guys anything no questions i think all right okay so since there are no questions i'm going to end the class feel free to dm any query wonderful session thank you thank you mike and pooja thank you so much thank you everyone for your presence for your trust in this safe space and i'm looking forward to you know meet all of you with another class another topic thank you jagriti thank you thank you shruti thank you all right bye good night